The following program is rated TV MALSV. It contains strong language, sexual situations, and violence. It is intended only for mature audiences. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Fight Mixer. Boys and girls, children of all ages, we thank you everybody for joining us tonight here on Amazon, Roku, Apple TV, YouTube TV, Illegal Streaming, Dial-Up, AOL 2.0, and uh, the bunny ears from the 60s. We thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, we are here with four-time, four-time, four-time world champion, Gabe Rudiger. Gabe, what's going on, brother? How are you? Another day, man. Just getting done with uh, working in my kids' class and uh, coming to talk to you fine gentlemen. Absolutely. And he, we are with MMA pioneer Jake Thunderhat. And Jake, what's going on, Ben? Ready for the show, man. Excited for this one. Oh, fuck yeah, I am. I'm excited for this, too, because we got big news to share about this guy. He was one of our first guests. Always a class act. Also survived the lollipop challenge. I'm so sorry the girls tormented your soul. I thought you would never come back. I'm so sorry, sir. We have the mighty UFC veteran Gabriel Green. What's going on, brother? Man, it's it's good. It's actually, you know, people are asking me, they're like, what 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 show is this? After I'm like, you guys remember when I ate that really, really, really hot um candy? And they're like, Oh, oh, after it. Uh so yeah, I mean, I'm hopefully I don't have to do that again. But um, but I mean it it was fun. It was fun. Um I'm always I'm always happy to be here. So whenever you uh whenever you send an invite, I'm I'm gonna come through. Dude, I felt so bad, man, and I want to personally apologize. Like when the girls say, Oh, we have to get Gabe. You gotta get Gabriel Green on our show, and I'm like, you, you can't torture him, though. Okay, this guy's a superstar. This guy's a rock star. You can't torture him. And then Ali came up with the idea, the bright idea, make you and subject you to the lollipop challenge, which is hotter than 1,000 uh, peppers. And I'm very, very sorry about that. And I thought you would never come back. So I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, it's more than appreciated. You know, it's <laughs> funny. Um, one of the one of the little girls that trains at one of the boxing gyms I go to, she was like, I, I don't know, just got really into all the videos that I've, I've been on YouTube or whatever. And um, she like was watching it and she was just like, the saliva, it was drool, you were drooling. I was like, yeah, yeah, it was, it was pretty hot. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, man, I had to do it. Uh, that five minutes was grueling. It, it proves that you're never too young for your first Vietnam flashbacks. Uh, Gabe was smart enough to not do it. He was just calling me a pussy the entire five minutes. So, you know, went pretty good <laughs> by all things considered. Motivation. I'm there for motivation. I don't like that nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. So we got big news to share. So obviously, we're going to talk all about our buddy. We're going to talk all about Gabriel Green. <laughs> Holy shit, we have some big news to share, man. Gabe, please take it away. Share that big news, baby. So um, I haven't fought in, in, since... July last year, but May 13th, I'm going to be back in the cage. I'm fighting against a, a guy who's been in the UFC for longer than I even started training. So it's going to be, he's, he's a little bit of a veteran. Uh, 
Yeah, me, me versus Jake Matthews, May 13th. Oh, uh, let's go. Let's yeah. fucking go, man. That's great, fucking- great name, great name to fight against. Uh yeah, I'm super excited. No, I'm, he, he likes to bang. I, I'm, I love to bang. It's it's gonna be a great one. What weight class? 170. Okay. Yeah. And shout out to your sponsor, by the way, Rusty Wall. Uh, you want to tell about your sponsor and give him a brief shout out. We were talking online. He's going to be sending me a t-shirt. I can't wait to represent, but uh, you want to tell a little bit about your sponsor really quick. Uh, I mean, Rusty, they're, they're, they're cool people. They, uh, uh, they have a little, like, like a, like a car club. And um, honestly, I haven't even met him in like real life. He just be like shooting me stuff. And, and he's always uh, sending me little car care packages with the, with the Rusty gang stuff on it. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's he's real cool people. If you're ever in uh, Newport area um, of California, uh, there's a little uh, like bar called Chihuahuas, and they, they always have viewing parties there for uh, any of my fights. And it looks like it's a really good time. I'm usually fighting, so I can't make the viewing party, but it looks super cool. Shout out to him. I, I, my my brother in law actually is big into classic cars and everything like that. So I gotta show him. I was looking through his Instagram, big stuff. Big, I, I can't wait to rep one of his t-shirts and shout out to him. Um, oh, we got Josh uh, Resnick. What's going on? Hope you win. Oh, getting getting a shout out to Mr. Gibbs. So, wh- why did it take you so long to get back in the cage? Uh, obviously, July is a very long layoff, but why did it take you so long? I mean, uh, first and foremost, uh, like I used to be a 55er. It's been some. I've been having some some growing pains. You know, like just trying to get as to be an actual 170 pound, like you know, welterweight size. So. Uh, uh, I, after my last fight, I was like, you know what? Cause I, I really don't cut anything. I was like, let me put an actual, a little bit, a little bit of size on, focus on these weights, get a little stronger, um, make the weight cut, like, you know, a little hard at least. And then, uh, you know, just, just so these guys aren't so much bigger than me. And, uh, so there was a, a portion of time where we were just hitting weights really hard. I got so much stronger, uh, really looking forward to put that on display. And then, um, after that, you know, I had, a little injury here and there that that put off my comeback but everything's been good to go since now and um yeah we hit him up we're like when when are we gonna get back in here like just give give me a date um i'm one of those guys that just stay in the gym the whole time so i'm, I'm always ready four days notice you know two weeks and then like you know i said the weight cut's pretty easy so if they call me i'm ready to rock and i, I told them i was ready to rock so i was just waiting for a date now um and then yeah it happened so i was just like let's go do you, do you yeah. feel the, the size has made you slow down, or do you feel like you're just as fast? Just you know, and you're stronger and can move as faster and stronger. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't. It wasn't like a. I, I didn't put on just like wasteless, wasteless size. It's all all <laughs> the, the the show is there, but it's it's all go, all go. Right, and, and, and typically, like, and Jake, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but like, you would always assume just cutting weight. You know, you're 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 gonna be. You know, show up stronger on fight day, considering that you're dropping all this weight, dropping all this water weight, and then you're gonna put it right back on um, after after the weigh-ins. That that would that would be the consensus. Um, you know, what what made you want to bump up weight and you know actually go up to a higher weight class? Um, well, for the it, I was like an in betweener before. You know, like really big for fifty five, really small for one seventy, and right. um, <clears throat> I really wish there was a sixty five. I still wish there was a sixty five. That that'd be my weight class all day. Um, like I, I could probably still get a, a bit, a bit bigger and still compete at 170. Uh, like, cause the, the cut's still going to be easy, just not as easy. I was basically showing up that week of on, on weight without having to cut anything before. So now, yeah, now I'm gonna have to cut a little bit, but you know, so much stronger, kept all my, just so much more explosive. Uh, and then, yeah, my, my cardio has always been pretty good and it didn't, it didn't dip at all. I was something I was uh, <laughs> worried about too. I was like, man, I'm getting pretty big. It's going to be, I wonder how the difference is when I'm moving around, but you know, sparring sessions, everything's good to go. And um, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a treat for everyone to see. And who says that good ideals don't come when you're fucking stoned? Nate Diaz was like, you know, 165, bro. We got to create that weight, weight class. Like, brilliant. Like, and we still haven't got it. Like, he wants a Grand Prix tournament for 165. The Schmo is pushing it. I, I, I still wish there was a 165 pound weight class, to be honest with you. 100%, 165, it like, it just, you know, 35, 45, 55, 65, then a 75, and then an 85. I think it should just go up those those every 10. 
Um, I mean, like boxing does it like every three. So, you know, every 10 is not that bad, you know? Exactly. And then Jake couldn't fight retirement. Jake hit a fight at 165. <laughs> oh, Jake. No, 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 man. I'm good. <laughs> I can eat whatever I want and not worry about a thing. Come on, Jake. Come on. I think you got one more in you. You got one in you. Come on, Jake. Come on. You're still a bad maybe motherfucker. Maybe I see you at the gym. I, I see clips. Come on, man. Yeah, maybe one. Maybe one. <laughs> maybe one. We'll get him at. Maybe uh, Gabriel Green and Taki and maybe you guys can trade together and you'll get him out of retirement. Maybe. Yeah, I, I love that. I'd love that. I, I've hey. seen your training regimen, man. You are going fucking balls to the wall, man. Your tra training looks like it's going really well. Like, what what have you added to your arsenal uh, coming to uh, – like, what, what what could you identify that you said, okay, the, it, this is what I'm really, really good at, so I'm going to work on this, 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 and then coming into this fight. Like, what, what did you add to your arsenal coming into this uh, upcoming fight? Uh, I mean, um, my first one, two – my first, my first two fights in the UFC, I didn't train with, uh, I, I, I didn't train muscle and any kind of strength training program whatsoever. I was just, you know, running in there going, all right, let's scrap. Uh, then I'm at, uh, elite Smith, uh, out of forge fitness, uh, and, uh, his partner, uh, Mark, all gas, no breaks. And they put me on an actual sick, really good program. And it's, uh, primarily just being really explosive and, and being able to, to repeat that over and over again. And, uh, I mean, just, just what you need when you're in a fight, you know, being able to go from A to B, whether it be your, your hand or your foot or your whole body as fast as you can make it go. And then being able to repeat it over and over again for, you know, 15 minute, 25 minute fight or whatever we're signed up for. And uh, so it's just been a real, real big focus on that. They just, uh, they're all scientific about it. I don't even, you know, it's above my pay grade. They just strap up this thing to uh, the whatever bar I'm lifting and they measure uh, how fast the bar is going and <clears throat> they just uh, stack more and more weight on it. And then the key though, for them, isn't so much how much weight's on the bar. It's uh, being able to move it at the speed that uh, is in their little, the, all I know is there's green bars and there's red bars. If I hit the green bar, I'm doing it right. So that's all I'm looking for when I'm looking at the little machine. You know, I it's pretty, pretty scientific. I just know that, uh, yeah. If I hear the little chime and a green bar shows up, I'm like, all right, cool. If the red bar hits, that means I got to go a little bit harder. <laughs> it, it, it just seems like that weight class is like murder's row, and you need that innovative type training and going – that balls of the wall training you're going to need, especially in that weight class. And is, is there any – like going into this particular fight, obviously you're finding a great opponent. Everybody is great in the UFC, including you. Like is there any weaknesses that you could identify – with your opponent, like obviously you can identify the strengths, but is there any weaknesses you can identify that you can exploit uh, going into this upcoming fight with your, your opponent? Uh, not, I mean, not really. He's a really well-rounded dude, you know, like he, uh, there's a reason why he's been fighting in the UFC since 2014. That's like, that's nine years, you know, if you are right. fighting in the UFC for nine years and you haven't got the boot yet, you're, you're doing something right. And uh, luckily there's, there's a lot of film, you know, for me to watch and just study up on. So I'm a, try to hit that a little bit more this weekend, see see if I can find anything, you know, that just capitalize on. But from what I've seen so far, when I've looked at him, it's just, you know, he's he's well-rounded. He can scrap. He, he I love his willingness to scrap. That's what's going to make it really fun. But, um, I mean, yeah, he's got wrestling. He's got jits. He, he got power. So he's just, he's just a real well-rounded fighter. We got Brian Gabe in that camp. BJJ Black Belt. Show him a thing or two about a thing or two. <laughs> Add some, add some more weapons to that arsenal. So, um, obviously, after this fight, we're assuming you're going to win. Obviously, you're training for for when nobody thinks about losing. After this win, uh, where do you plan on taking uh, your UFC career? Uh, I think uh, – I, I don't know. The UFC only really posts, like, top 15 guys. But um, Tapology has them at in 21 for, like, across all big promotions being won and uh, – like Bellator, UFC. So I'm assuming he's around the top 20. So after I beat him, probably boost me into the top 20, which is, you know, just it's great. It's the place you want to be. Um, and then um, I, uh, this May will be uh, right after the fight. will be three years since I fought D-Rod on four days notice, two years off the couch. So he's in the top 22. I think he's like 18 or something like that. So I think that beating uh, Jake Matthews, Gets me finally in that position where I can kind of ask for that rematch that uh, I think a lot of people want to see, actually, too. Fuck yeah. I know I want to see it. I know uh, we all want to see it, especially as fight fans. 
So any last words, especially about your career? We're going to go in right into five topics and we're going to pick your brain. You're going to drop some knowledge bombs about the sport and five random topics. topics. But before that, what can we expect? What can you tell your fans? What can we expect out of this uh, upcoming fight and for the, uh, the, the next couple of fights in your career? Um, man, <clears throat> you can expect me to just go out there and, uh, yeah, I, I've gotten really religious in the, the last couple months. Uh, and, and so <clears throat> reading the Bible, going back and forth and, and Jesus is talking about like loving your neighbor. And, and I used to kind of struggle with that in the sense of fighting before. And I was like, you know, how am I going to fight someone and, and love them at the same time? That is, it seems pretty counterintuitive, but, uh, I've really come, uh, into my own and my understanding of that. And, um, I'm going to love my neighbor like I love myself. That means I'm going to bring everything I can into every situation I'm in, uh, doing everything I can to bring the best out of whoever I'm coming against because I expect the same thing uh, to be coming from them. So uh, out of all love and respect, just expect me every five four to bring every little ounce that I can into the cage, into anything I do, and um, just, you know, just, just go out there and do what I got to do. You know, my, my, old, my old boxing coach used to say he was a hardcore Christian. We used to pray before and after practice, and we get in there, and he's like, "As Christians, we don't fight, but if we do fight, we fight 110." percent So I'll never forget that. I mean, yeah, that that that's what it is. Uh, you know, we're we're, we're givers, so we're gonna we're gonna give it. <laughs> give some of these. I always felt it was a contradictory, like, uh, you know, especially in wrestling practice, we would say, uh, we would say a prayer, we'd go into the circle, we'd say a prayer, and then coach would say, come on, let's just fucking kill them now, let's fucking murder them, okay, great, awesome, so we prayed, and, you know, now we have to go out and, and bury some bodies, you know what I'm saying, like, you, you know what it is, though, it, especially in the, in the Old Testament, there's a whole lot of smiting going around, so, you know, like, if it's God's will, it's God's will, so whatever that be is going to be done. Yep, and may... His his soul might belong to Jesus, but his ass is going to belong to Gabriel Green. It's perfect. It's <laughs> awesome. And on that note, we're going to go to five Ram topics. I know you never played this before, uh, Gabriel Green. We always subject you to games. I'm so sorry about that. Nevertheless, you know, we like to mix it up. Obviously, you're going to get the same podcast and same television show questions for the uh, next coming months up to your fight. So we like to switch it up, pick your brain, and, you know, obviously you don't make it to the biggest stage of the game just being a great fighter, but being very smart at the sport and being very knowledgeable at the sport. So we're going to bring up five random topics and we're going to talk about it. We call this five topics. And all my bros and hoes in different area codes, if you want to play along, just leave a comment and you can actually join in the conversation. Talk to Gabriel Green, Jake Hatton, and uh, uh, Gabriel DeGuer. So, we're going to go into five topics. Gabriel Green, guest host with the most for the evening. Are you ready for the first topic? Uh, as ready as I can be. Perfect. Four-time world champion, Gabe, are you ready? Ready to go. All right. And Jake Hatton, are you ready? Let's do it. Fuck yeah. Let's go into topic number one. Let's go. Okay. This was the first topic that was actually brought up and landed on my desk, and I thought we wanted to bring it up. But Knuckle Mania 3, I don't know if you've been following the bare knuckle scene, but uh, Knuckle Mania 3 just happened, just uh, transpired. Great event, great fights. Um, you know, uh, great fights top the bomb. I don't know if you watched it, but uh, the, the big controversy is Diego Sanchez, an MMA legend, MMA pioneer, tough one, veteran. I mean, he's, you know, a legend. This was hard to watch. I We watched the entire event, could not watch that fight. Your thoughts on Knuckle Mania 3, and if you did not see it, what are your thoughts about Diego Sanchez fighting in uh, Bare Knuckle? Um, I didn't uh, – I've just seen highlights. I knew he uh, he fought against um, – I can't remember the top of the, off the top of my head, but he, he was like an elite boxer or just someone of, above his pedigree. And, um, I mean, I, I, I think that that's tough. I don't even – it seemed like the commission shouldn't even necessarily allowed that one to – to, to happen and I, I mean I didn't I didn't really I just saw highlights of it and I was just like ugh yeah but I mean at the end of the day he is kind of a grown man so if no one's gonna stop him you know so with that I he is a grown man but grown men do stupid things we can still be dumb kids and that's why we have commissions that's why we have people that that are supposed to look out for us and especially our health uh Diego Sanchez 
being put in that position, my personal feeling was criminal. And the commission to say that it's okay to allow a man that is showing uh, obvious brain damage to go against a former pro boxing champion in bare knuckle is criminal. Jake, what do you think? Don't get me started on the fucking boxing commissions because they're a fucking joke and I hate them and they do nothing for the fighters and, and it is criminal. And, and you're right. Grown men do stupid stuff and Gabe's right. They do protect themselves. You know, Diego's Diego's a legend, but they shouldn't allow him to fight. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a joke, you know, on the boxing commission. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, it's awful. I mean, it, like I said, he's a legend, but it's just, the commission, they're just making a paycheck and, you know, they're making a paycheck, you know, and the promoters don't give a shit. You know, it, it's it's awful. It's awful what they do. And I hate it. And my personal opinion, of course, is because I grew up watching him. So obviously I'm pro fighter through and through. I think every fighter should get a million dollars, even though it's not a sustainable business model. I think everybody should have insurance. I think everybody should be taken care of. I think fighters should be put on this pedestal for the warriors that they are in the 1% that have the balls to do this. I mean, you can play every sport one ball, but combat sports take two balls, right? So I, I, you know, it, it, it hurts my soul, especially somebody I grew up watching. I mean, I remember Diego Sanchez fighting a king in the cage. Game signed to tough one, being super stoked that he was going to be in his house with full of legends like Forrest Griffin, who his fight, first fight, he fought uh, Dan Severn. I mean, like all these legends were going to be in this house. Diego Sanchez was that pioneer and part of that elite group, just like Gabe was and just like all these fighters that helped build the sport to what it is today. And, you know, I, it was it was an honor as a fan to watch him practice his craft. You know, it, I don't know anything about the business side of things. I just know as a fan that hurts the soul to – watch a legend and a pioneer go through that and actually still compete. You know, he should go out, be in the hall of fame and, you know, coach and mentor the next generation of fighters. That, that's my personal opinion. I, I I'm getting like fucking choked up talking about, but that was one fight I could not watch, could not see, could not watch Diego Sanchez do that. As, as Gabe said, he's a grown man and he has the opportunity to do what he wants. And I'll tell you, fighters are a different breed and you're always going to have that, that element to like, I can do it. Let's go. And the thing is, is we need, like I said, you need to have other people and commissioners that are like, look, like perfect example is Chuck Liddell and, and Tito. Oh, God. I saw Chuck hitting pads. I was like, yo. I man. thought that was a joke, Gabe. Man, when he was hitting the pads. Like, like genuinely, who is allowing this to happen? And how is he posting this and allowing this to be like, maybe, maybe okay, maybe he's doing it as a, as, as a, a, a psych off, make him think that he's not that good. But yeah, I, I thought he was slow, like slow playing or something right? too. That he was just like pretending, like oh, he's 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 got it. He he's just not taking it serious. He's saving the the real go for for showtime. Yeah, well, I that that whole I had a friend that fought on the undercard, so I was there, and I was yeah. I was just like, oh my, it's oh well, no, look, I get it. Like, look, I'll I'll, I'll be on, I'm 45. I have my neck, my back fused. I still when I when I'm in a fight and I'm cornering, I'm like, I get another one in. I know I can. And then I train hard. I'm like, wait, no, I, my body won't hold up the way I want it to. You're always going to have that, that, that mentality, uh, especially when, you, when you've been, that's all the only way you make money. Like, especially when you're done, like you've had this career and you're like, okay, now I don't have, I, like, okay, I, I, don't have a, I don't have a school. I don't have any other thing that's going on for me. Uh, this is how I made my money. This is how I was able to provide for my family. Yeah. It's always going to be in you. But again, like it's, 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 it's a uh, part of the commission and other people to step in and be like, look, man, you had an amazing go. You were, you, you are a legend. You, you put it on the line over and over again. And that's why we need to protect you now. I've always yeah. thought that uh, like the same thing. One, um, I know that more than anything else, I love fighting and um, it's going to be really hard for when it's my last fight. But <clears throat> luckily I'm surrounding myself with some, some really good, uh, people that aren't just yes men, and when when it's my time to go, they're gonna look at me, maybe slap me, and make sure I'm paying attention, and say, "Game, no more." Take and you to the waterfall. Me. Take you right to that waterfall, man. That scary <laughs> trip, like, "Hey, Gabe, arm around the shoulder." Coach saying, "You know it's time to go, right?" <laughs> like, the dramatic, the dramatic retirement, you know. Yeah, and you know, so uh, that that that's 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 when I know it's gonna be timeout because I I know I'm gonna be like no like one more one more and they're just one my friends tell me they're probably gonna have like an intervention just pull me together sit me down and be like all right you know it's over and then I'll be like all right all right they're gonna call you they're gonna be like hey hey Gabe we're gonna we're gonna come train you get to the train session 
Yeah. yeah. Intervention. Oh, fuck, man. That's what I'm going to Sit down. We're going to have a talk. That's, that's for sure what's going to happen, for sure. Yeah, Frank, it's time for you to become a podcaster full-time. You have a brochure on Fight Mixer. You're going to be a host. <laughs> hey, if that's what it is, that's what it is. Fuck yeah, man. So, uh, all right, guys, are you ready for topic number two? Gabe, are you ready? Ready. Hey, which Gabe? I'm ready. Uh, Gabe Green. Yeah. Perfect. Hey, both these guys are ready. Let's go. It's Gabe Squared. We have too many legendary Gabes on this show. Too many too many legendary Gabes. Holy shit. Godzilla and Gabe. So we'll, we'll do that. All right, let's go to question number two. Trivia Boogaloo. Just a little ditty about two. Holy shit. Uh, UFC 285 is next weekend. Does John Jones win his comeback? This is one question that was submitted. Thank you very much, Donnie, for that question. I appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Gabe, uh, Gabe, Gabriel Green, Gabe, Mr. Gabe, too, what do you think about this uh, fight? Does John Jones win his comeback? Um, I think I think he does. You know, like, I'm not necessarily a big believer in, in, in ring rust, especially when you're someone – who competed at, at the highest level and did such an amazing job like John Jones did. I'm pretty sure the entire time he, uh, he, he's been grinding. He, even though he wasn't competing, you know, he was training and, uh, granted he, he, he's got a little older, but he's still not like old where he's out of his prime prime. You know, he, he's right there at the top still. I, I think we might even just see a better John Jones than we've ever seen before. Fair enough. Mr. Gabe, your thoughts, how do you square it? It depends if he wrestles or not. The wrestling's gonna be this side. I got Gane hits like a, a truck and he's got really, really good stand up. Uh, and heavyweights just a different, uh, the, 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 like you're dealing with a different size ratio. The heavyweights, the, everyone wants the heavyweights because they knock you out, they, yeah. they hit with power. And that's uh, again, I'm smart with enough heavyweights to realize it's a different animal, all in all. A two of five and a two in a, in a heavyweight are just different animals. I'll tell you, if, if John Jones is smart, he will wrestle him, and that will be the decisive, decisive way that he wins. Another thing uh, that, that uh, you got to remember, there are many, many fights that John Jones had against guys that he should have gone through that, that, that were very, very uh, uh, competitive. Reyes, uh, uh, Dominic Reyes, had him kind of uh, could have gone either way. The first Gustafson fight, uh, he's had some fights where, like, like guys scary. Really scary. dominate the division. He's supposed to be the top tier guy. No one can touch him. And these fights are competitive. That was what was happening prior to his career being, or to, to, to the, the, this, a uh, uh, little bit of a, uh, was it been two years, three years layoff? How long uh, it been? Not, yeah. His, his last fight, I think was 2018, uh, 2019, I believe. Okay, was his exactly. last fight. Four years, four years, is a long time to be out of that ring. Yeah. Now, I mean, again, for me personally, I think it comes down to the wrestling. But, you know, I, I think it's an interesting fight either way. Fuck yeah. What do you think, Jake? You know, I was uh, I, w- I was wondering about this. And I, I thought the same thing, Gabe, right? You know, he had some really close fights. I mean, let's be honest. The guy was out partying and hardly training before the night of the fight. So I don't think he had anything to get up for. And once you're at that level, you know, it's hard to stay at that level, you know. And so, but now I think he's got some of those competitive juices flowing. He's got a new challenge, you know, and he, he, he did it right. He took enough time to put that weight on, you know, to get his movement, right. His body is going to be different. Let's face it with, you know, the big old booty that he's got on him now. So I think he, you know, and what concerns me about gone and he's such a likable guy, but he just basically said he's lazy in one of the interviews he was with. And that scared the shit out of me. So yeah. we know we know John's gonna out wrestle him. So I think he pressures him against the cage, makes it a little bit dirty, s- sticks that double leg, takes him down, and beats him. So I think I think John runs away with this one. And and, and I'll bring up what I brought up uh, last week. And I hate gotcha questions. I hate when the media does it. I never want to any, ruffle any feathers. My job is to be a hype man, especially when I go to the UFC events and I ask questions or everything like that. My job is to be a hype man through and through. And I was not trying to get a gotcha question with Gain. But when I asked him, I said, so, Gain, what problems and what uh, situations are going to put John Jones in? What what problems are you going to create for him that Zingano was not going to create for him? And he looked a little bit puzzled. And that, like, concerned me. And I'm like, oh, shit. I didn't mean to have, like, a gotcha question. Like, that was a legitimate question. Like, I know he has weapons. I know he has the knockout power and he has the technique and he has the arsenal to get it done. But – it's going to be up to if gain, and this is what I what I think and what I gathered. I think it's going to be up for gain to mentally get in that zone, thinking I can beat John Jones. Like 
Buster Douglas, no way should he beat Mike Tyson, but he had in his mind he's going to beat Mike Tyson. And the losing was far out of his mind. I think Gain needs to get into that situation. Like, I, I think Gain in his own mind thinks, okay, I'm a replacement for Zingano. And but is, is that a gotcha question, though, as a fucking fighter? If you don't know that answer, that that's concerning. You yeah. know what I mean? But I, I think that's concerning. Like, I, I'm sure if I ask Gabriel Green that, Gabriel Green will be like, I, I'll tell you everything I'm going to bring up to this motherfucker. Right? <laughs> I'm going to knock him out. He's fucking done. But, like, it, I just saw that hesitation, and I felt so bad after because I didn't want to stump anybody. I My job is to hype everybody up. Like, my, that's my job. And, like, it's just like, holy shit. Like, I, I think Gain does not think, you know, I, I think he thinks of himself as a replacement for Zingara, which is not true. He's an elite heavyweight, you know? I'll say it, that. uh mentality goes super 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 far in a fight i would rather fight <clears throat> with a broken hand than have my mental not be in the right place uh or you know any kind of ankle knee any kind of problems a physical problem you can mentally push through push past all that uh the fight game although most guys i mean i'm sure you guys know because you're <laughs> you know great greats in the sport on um but it's super mental we People like to think we go out there and we just chuck them and just hope that something lands. But yeah, you got to have a game plan. It's really, it's really chess out there. So, Dave, um, let, me ask you, Dave, let me ask you a question. Have you ever signed a fight where you didn't think you were going to beat the guy? <laughs> Never. Exactly. <laughs> Never. Exactly. And that's like what going off of what Dave said, he, that's wrong. Donnie knows he's going to win. Will he win? You don't sign fights, especially at the championship level. You don't know in your mind that you can beat them. Now, the the, the fate is is in the fight itself. But I have never once signed a contract and been like, "Oh God, this guy can beat me." Uh uh no. In my mind, and now I, I have eight losses, but every one of those guys, I still feel, give me another shot. Like it was just that moment. They got me in that moment. Great. Okay, let's do it again. Yep. Yep. Run, run it back. Uh, yeah, you got, you got me. You got you. You're better today. You're better today. But yeah. if we bought tomorrow, yeah, we bought yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> but but so Ghani, I don't think Ghani's like thinking he can't beat Jones. He wouldn't have signed that contract if he didn't think he could beat him. True. Without question, he's like, look, I'm gonna beat him. Will he? That's the deciding factor. Very true. Very true. So, are you ready for topic number three, Gabe? Are you ready, sir? Gabe, Gabe Square. Gabe Green's ready. Gabe is ready. Gabe is ready. Let's go to question number three. The Green has feet on the feet. Three. Now, now this I didn't know, but Patty Pimblett's next fight was actually announced. It, it, I, I think it might even be on your card. I'm not really too sure. This this question stumped me. And by the way, thank you very much for this question, John. And But Patty Pimblett's next fight, is it too dangerous? Who is he? Uh, did you guys hear about his next fight? Or Yep. Who's he fighting? Drew Dober. That's that's oh. a very good question. Handy dandy phone. I think I think it's gonna be uh he's gonna be fighting against Drew Dober. Drew James Dober two, UFC two eighty eight. Drew Dober. I think I, if it's Drew Dober, that that's that's a pretty that's that's a pretty dangerous that's, fight for 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 Pimblet. That, yeah. That's a, that's oh. a, that's <laughs> they leveled him up far. They leveled him up far. That's not like one step up there. They're, that like I think Drew Dober is like a top ten guy, yeah. Holy I know shit. that. I mean, he just. Uh, how did the fight end with uh with uh with Green? Um, that he it was a knockout, right? He he knocked out Bobby. Yeah, yeah, he Green, knocked out Green, Bobby. Was, Green was getting. A, they were going back and forth, and he was kind of piecing them up. But Dober just kept moving forward. That forward pressure. But all he needs to do is connect that. He doesn't mind taking three punches to to put that one on his chin, and that's that's scary. Those are those scary guys. And Bobby is like he. He's a hard person to hit, you know. Um, we got hands on him. I'll give, yeah, and Pat Patty, not not so hard to hit. I mean, you saw his, his last fight, man. He was getting he was getting touched up so much. Every he, fight he's in. It, it really it, his last fight really showed though, like you know that he's not he's not right to the level. He's not yeah, really a good. lot of holes in his game for sure. Like, well, at least on the striking. Wait, uh, Mr. Green, are you fighting on UFC two eighty eight? Uh, no, nah, it's a fight night, May 13th. Oh, night. Well, that's okay. the, the, he's fighting the week before then? Is, is that the, the May 6th card? Yeah, May 6th. He's fighting on May 6th. Holy I tried. I, I tried. When they told me May 13th, I was like, what What can we do about getting me the week before? And they were like, <laughs> uh, 
Right. Uh, no, 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 no. You money, baby. But that, that's a stacked fucking car, man. We got Aljamain Sterling. He's fighting Henry Ciudo in Henry Ciudo's comeback fight. That's a real topic of discussion. Not exactly Patty Pimblett, but, you know, Henry Ciudo's coming back against Aljamain Sterling. That's that's a scary fight for uh, Aljamain. I mean, both of them are very, very skilled. And Henry Ciudo, triple three. See, baby, he's coming back. I mean, that's pretty exciting. That's That should be the topic of discussion. I think that... Because uh, he's over there training with uh, with Mighty Mouse, man. He's got, like, the greatest, you know, partner to just be drilling everything with, getting so much work with. Because both of their their MMA brains are just, like, their Wait, IQs are through the roof, and they're just building on top of each other. That's Mighty Mouse? Was that? Who's training with Mighty Mouse? Uh, Cejudo. Oh, oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, well, I they're they're always posting that they're the together and like his little yeah. I, I I don't I don't really follow him either. Just like, but I'm in group chats and people be sending stuff, gotcha. and I'm just like, oh okay, yeah. No, yeah. When I when I saw that, I was like, that's 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 an amazing gym to be in for sure. Yeah. Aljamain Sterling is still training with a uh, Lake Lake uh, Ray Longo's gym, and Ray Longo's gym is also Murder the Row. I mean, you know that that makes for an exciting fight. I think it's gonna be a, a pretty exciting fight, but. Obviously, you think uh, Patty Pimblett's next fight is too dangerous, Jake? What do you think about uh, Patty Pimblett fighting uh, Dober? That 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 sounds pretty scary. I didn't even know. It was yeah, Dober. yeah. Like like Gabe said, when I heard that, I thought it was a joke because I didn't think the UFC was going to put their poster boy. You know that that's their cash cow. I didn't think they were going to do this to him. Drew Dober is going to do him ugly. It, it's yeah. just I I I'm I'm surprised this fight's happening. Do, yeah. Dober just walks him down. Gabe, I'm starting to get flashbacks when Sakuraba was making Pride all this money. Oh, Sakuraba, you're the biggest name in the world. Let's feed you to fucking Vandalay Silva. That seems like a sweet idea. I'm starting to get Sakuraba Vandalay Silva flashbacks. I, I I don't know. Is that fight signed? I um, don't think it was signed. But it's it's I'll, I'll tell you, I I like like uh, like Jake said, uh, it's it doesn't make business sense, and I can't imagine as much as I I, I think Patty's pretty confident. I don't think he's that confident. Maybe, maybe he's overconfident. Um, you know, I look that like look. There, there's something to be said about like wanting to take fights, and maybe maybe Patty's like, look, let let me get into the top ten. This is my shot. And the thing is, the top twenty guys in, in lightweight are monsters. Yeah, like, and 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 all of them would destroy Patty. You know what I mean? Like, dude, like uh, the take the top the top twenty, top fifteen. They would all destroy him. If if Dober is in the top ten, there isn't much room for him to go against anybody. And if 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 he's confident, he wants to do it. You know what? I I I wish him uh, the best. Fair enough. So, are you ready for topic number four, gentlemen? <laughs> Let's fucking do this. Topic number four. Love question four. Ah oh, shit! We're gonna have to bring this up again. Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury. Who wins? <laughs> Gabriel Green, I'm sorry to subject you for this question, but Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury, who wins? Uh, I'm Jake Paul, I guess. <laughs> Gabe, did we kill you? <laughs> uh, it was boring topics, making me want to fall asleep. Uh, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, I, you know, I thought it was going to be mildly competitive because uh, uh, Fury has pro boxing and, and then jake sent me the the list of opponents and i was like oh no 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 uh yeah i mean i i, I don't care either way and and i mean if tommy furry wins i'll slow clap to that i i'll be honest ever since jake paul beat anderson i was like the kids got some skills uh because and i boxed anderson anderson's not that I'm, I'm not a pro boxer by any means but anderson has hands um and uh uh after that, I he can fight anyone. I really don't care. Fair enough, Jake. Did you, did you come up with a prediction for this weekend's mega fight between two rookies? It, <laughs> uh, under four, you know, Jake. Jake's a powerful. And look, I'm actually kind of excited about this fight. Uh, I'll be honest with you because Fury's been running. You know, he's been running away. <laughs> Gabe, Gabe, come on, come oh, on, Gabe. Right, right. Well, Fury, Fury's been running, and you know, and, and Jake, you know, Jake wants to put this to rest. But yeah, I mean, his combined records, you know, Fury's opponents. I get tomato cans, but one guy was zero and twenty six. One guy's zero and eleven. Zero and nine. Two oh and my god! And one. But oh. this is the boxer's journey. Mike Tyson fought cans. Everyone fights like journey. Yeah, yeah, but zero and twenty six. 
One All guy's right, maybe you do. All right, we're not Gabriel Green and Gabe and Jake and fight fucking monsters and buzzsaws your entire career, okay? Not everybody has those big of balls, okay? They're, they're boxing, okay, mm -hmm. sir? I'm you're sorry. Fighting. This you is the journey. Adversity. You need to fight some adversity to see if you're a fighter or not. Anyone yeah. can fight in, in Gabe. You you know Gladiator Challenge. You can be a Gladiator Challenge champion, and you could be 12-0, and 15-0, and, and fight nobody, and then you fight someone real, and then you we see who you really are. I'm like 95% sure the Gladiator Challenge <laughs> opponents are just guys in the audience that they just – I fought on it. Hey. I, I, I was there when a dude fought uh, – one of my buddies fought a dude who was petting a turtle – and they're, they're trying to get a picture of the guy, and the guy's like, "No, my friend, my friend." And the guy was a, and I go, "Who is this guy?" They're like, "He's homeless. He just, he like a, a he was a homeless, uh, mentally ill went man. And they paid two hundred bucks to get head kicked knockout." You know, so that's, I, the same, I think, that's the same boxing commission that's still working on uh, on Diego Sanchez's fights. I see. <laughs> I, I think. I think the. It's just everyone wants to be on the big show and no one wants to like put the work in to do it. To get yeah, there. you know, like because I, I mean, to get in the big show, you're gonna need to go on like a five, six fight win streak, get some finishes. And uh, so everyone, I think a big problem with just the generation, like not even outside of fighting, people don't like to work, you know, like we just people like things that are really easy. Uh, it's a gratification, man. Twi uh, Tinder. Oh, swipe right to find it, love. Instant gratification, man. Like, exactly. So, like, when you have to, you know, like you're talking about adversity and being a fighter, if you're going to actually fight guys that have a chance to, like, you know, like you're four, let's say you're four and no, all finishes, they're like, all right, fight this guy who's three and no, but he's got all finishes. And now you might go to four and one. So, you're going to have to go stockpile another, you know, four fights. And guys are like, I don't want to do all that. I, just let me let me get the guy petting the turtle, and then we'll be all right, you know. Like so, <laughs> it's just I, um, like I we didn't do that with uh, my coach didn't do that with me. I mean, he uh, every guy that I I fought like by the time I was in the UFC, like the 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 win to loss of my opponents combined were like you know I beat guys who who beat other people, and that's why when it came to my first test in the UFC against D Rod, you know, even if it was on four days notice and it was last minute. Um, I, I still kind of just des I deserve to be there because I fought guys of the caliber, you know, uh, uh, that that could also be there. And uh, yeah. a lot of guys aren't getting tested till they get there. And then, um, I mean, you you see them even the guys that are like getting a shot at the contender series. Sometimes they're just you know, they're one guy's good and the other guy's like not as good because he you know just uh, what's it called uh, for the record? Uh, what, what 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 do they call it? Softened it? Uh, Tomato cans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had all the tomato cans. So padding. just uh, padding the record. So you padding, the record. padding the record. That's that's the term. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, that, it, that, that's a great that's a great point because uh they were padding um I forget who Mike Tyson fought when he got out of jail, but it was a big, big mega pay-per-view. It ended in like 40 seconds. My mom ordered the the pay-per-view and it lasted like and once again, I grew up poor, so my mom had to rub two nickels together to afford that boxing UFC pride pay-per-view. But Jesus Christ, like, everyone's talking about this Irish guy, uh, the Tornado. Uh, what the fuck is his name? They they spent years padding his record to get ready for Tyson to get out of jail. Was it Jerry something? Jerry, uh, was oh, that? Oh, shit. This is going to haunt my soul. I know he was white. Uh, yeah, it, it, he's from uh, Mass, from Massachusetts. Uh, uh, fuck, man. But... Yeah, like people pad their records and then they get to they fight fight that adversity, that one buzz saw, and once they first get hit, that it's like, oh shit, lights go like glaring, you know, like it's it's crazy, man. I think I mean that the whole adversity, like I, 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 I enjoy it, right? You know, like if I'm in a fight and I'm bringing everything I can, and I'm, <clears throat> my coach says I'm weird because I actually enjoy the actual fight um like if if i'm i'm trying to enforce my will on the other person he's trying to enforce my uh, his will on me when i hit him and, and he doesn't break it's not like a oh my eyes get big moment it's like a all right like let's go this is like go. like yeah like like all right it's, it's go time now you know it, like it, it gets it gets me going more than anything and um 
I, uh, I think that's when you determine if you're if you're like a real fighter or not. And guys never even have that moment before they get to the big show now because they're doing the padding of the record. Gabe, Gabe like you, do you remember the first time you got hit really hard in a fight and that fight or flight kicked? I, I remember mine, but do you remember yours? The first time you got hit and you're, you know, you either, you're either going to roll over and quit, which a lot of guys do, or you, like I said, you grit your teeth down and go. It was actually when I was a... Uh, before I, it was like first fight I ever been in. I was I was in high school and um, um, some one guy was saying he had beat me up and I was like, oh no no you, I, and I had never been in a fight before, but I was like you can't beat me up right, and then I go and I'm actually you know like piecing him up and stuff. I thought I knew how to fight because I watch YouTube videos, but then he like he he just covered up and he just sat down and threw an overhand right and it popped me square on my nose because I was just staying right in front of him and I backed up and. My eyes started watering, blood started dripping, and it was just like I was. It was like okay, you know, like you got me, but that's not gonna happen again. And then I I opened up on him, but yeah, you know, like I I always figured, you know, I, sometimes it was at least in the beginning of my my fight career it was almost a detriment even because like if you hit me, I was like oh, I'm gonna get mine back right now, you know. So I had to evolve from that and and become a little more patient and be like, all right, you know, like I'll get it back, <clears throat> but it doesn't have to be, you know. Right, right now, right now. Fuck yeah. All right. Are you ready for the last and final topic? Gabriel Green, the mighty Gabriel Green. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Gabe, are you ready? And Jake Hatton, are you ready? Come on, let's go. All right, let's fucking go. Let's go to uh, topic number five. Let's make a baby five. All right, we got to talk about this again. Uh, <laughs> I, I got two questions asking about Power Slap Review thus far. Obviously, we're coming almost to the conclusion of the first season and the road to the championship. Uh, Gabriel Green, we obviously we can get your thoughts on the topic. And what do you think about Power Slap so far? You know what? I wouldn't do it personally. It's not it's not for me at, at all. I actually have a, one of the one of the guys I know he's on, he's on uh he's on the show he made it past the first round he's he's gonna have a second match coming up and um I mean his his record wasn't great as an MMA fighter and it's putting him you know kind of turning him into a little bit of a mini star and and you know putting some 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 light on him so and he's enjoying it he's like getting slapped and like shaking off and like doing dance moves after and He's, it's making it entertaining for people. So, I mean, I would never do it, but if people, if, if that's their route to be getting paid and putting food on their table, and I'm not going to say don't put food on the table, you know, like go feed your family, take care of your, like if, if she can take advantage of it, go and take advantage of it. I just would never partake in it personally. Fair enough. And uh, I, before Gabe and Jake burst my bubble and say what they really, really think, I've been watching the season. I've been watching Power Slap. I enjoy it. And once again, I enjoy all combat sports. I, I respect all the combatants. And once again, I grew up tape trading, watching a UFC, ordering the Pride pay-per-views, having to wait till that television delay on direct TV, go down to my dad's camper and order it at 12 a.m. to get the replay. Not go on SureDog.com to see the uh, the results because it's going to be on a tape delay. But I remember giving MMA a shot when media outlets weren't giving a shot. Fans weren't going to give it a shot. I remember rubbing two nickels together and buying that Tap Out t-shirt when Tap Out couldn't uh, even afford in, uh, TapOut.com. And they pretty much paid for InYourFace.com. And I was a hardcore MMA fan. And I believed in the sport. And I believed in the athletes. And I gave this shot unlike any other media outlet that's right now on the balls of MMA. So once again, the same fans that are still bad mouthing it are the same fans that share those vicious knockouts from boxing. They love Mike Tyson. They go to a fight. They cheer. They yell, oh, my God, fucking knockout. They laugh when somebody gets knocked out. The same critics of slap, Power Slap are the same people that share those videos and celebrate when someone gets viciously and brutally knocked out. My point from weeks ago was this point, and it still remains this point. I think there's mental grit that goes into it. I think you have to be mentally tough, mentally sound, being able to take those hits and still keep coming and keep your, your mind in check. And I, I think I'm starting to get the sport. I respect the sport and all the competitors. And once again, I want to give it a chance because still nobody's giving it a fucking chance. Now, Gabe, you may burst my bubble and make fun of me for giving Power Slap a chance. Go. Not a combat sport. 
Don't call it's it a combat, combat sport. It's not a combat sport. combat sport. If you hit me, I hit you. You hit me, I hit you. It's, it's not a combat sport. There's no sport involved in it. Like, like, like do you have to have a skill set? Yeah, you have to be able to take a, you able to take a slap. You be able to deliver a slap. There, there's no strategy outside of that. So it's not a combat sport. My, Gabe, I don't want to disagree. I don't want to argue with you because you can rip my limbs off and feed them to me. But like, I, I respectfully disagree. Sir. You my, this is my opinion. We have varying opinions, and that's perfectly okay. I have no issue with whatsoever having a different opinion than yours. Um, I didn't realize there was actually a season. That's the most ridiculous shit I've ever heard. There's a season, like. Fuck out of here. Gabe, um, we were talking about this, about like how I respected like pop and people going through the housing pro like process and how much I hate it. We talked about this. I, I, I maybe I don't remember. I, I, I come on, man. I you blacked so, out. I will say this. Like Gabe said, if, if people are making money on it and they want to do it, they can have at it. That's fine. That you know, I, I have I, I'll tell you this. I've watched some highlights, but overall I, I don't really care to watch it. You know it's far more entertaining than that. The M1 uh, uh, knights that they, they they do MMA in full knight armor with like swords, it. fucking battle axe. That shit is fucking amazing, son. I, I love your sarcasm. Hours. I love your sarcasm, Jake. Gabe is making fun of me. Sarcastic, that's true. I'm oh, he's making fun of me, Jake. Can you please stand up for me, please, sir? Can I, you? Buddy, buddy, I can't. I, I'm not against it, and I respect athletes, but I agree with Gabe. And I've done dumber things for money. But there's just no strategy involved. Again, imagine an MMA fight. Be like, I'm fighting Gabe. I'm like, hey, Gabe, all right, stand there. I'm going to throw a three-piece combo. Bah, bah, bah. Okay, now it's your turn. There's just there's just no strategy. I just don't get it. And I don't know how the fuck they're sanctioning this. I, I just I just don't get it because that's, that's a good – Again, I'm all for the guys making money. Much respect for all the competitors. I just don't understand the, the – it, it, it's not a combat sport. I think that uh, the they were saying that the amount of significant strikes that were being land, landed in the slap competition were less than an actual fight. And that's why the commission was saying that it was. But, how, but how many fights have you had where you, you, you take a guy down and submit? I mean, it's, that's, it's, that's crazy. If you're letting a guy, you're just standing there and you're letting a guy perfectly, you know, just, just perfectly tee up and smack you. I mean, that, uh, that one shot's got to be worth, you know, how, how many other shots? I, I told my coach I would do it if I won the coin toss every single time <laughs> yeah, I wanted right. to go first. And if I didn't knock him out, I would just, I would, I would nope, right, I'm out of here. That was it. You guys, you got like, this. I'm out of here. So, I mean, yeah, like, same. I, I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't do it personally. I, I, I think I would. Being like standing there with the because they put the little thing behind their back, like yeah, I think it'd be almost impossible for me not to like roll for just reactions or so. Like I couldn't just, exactly. I don't think I'd be able to just yeah, stand. There. Like you're letting another man slap you in the face. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm not. I'm not. I I would just I would lose it. Like I I like, yeah. I'd be like a third round. Like you know what? Let's <laughs> let's get busy. Let's do this for real. No, no. Uh. -uh. Yeah. Let me ask you this question on the show. Somebody hit something. How do you shit talk? You're like, let's go. All right, hold on. Let me yeah. put my hands behind my back. Okay, slap me. Like me. Is that is that is that how you get even with the guy? Slap like you a know? bitch. Put slap your like hand behind your back and you just you know. Your girlfriend slapped me last night, and it was something like that. Fair enough. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're heading towards the end of the show, so I figured we try something new. Obviously, we want to talk about Gabriel Green before uh, we wrap it up, like a Christmas present. Uh, we're gonna go into final words where. We're going to go down the list. So we're going to line up just like so. Hold on one second. Let me stop this bad boy. So we're going to go down the list just like so, starting with Gabriel Green. Whatever comes to mind. So essentially, whatever comes to mind, whatever, it could be any random topic. And uh, we're going to go down the line. So let's just say Gabriel Green goes and he says something. Then Gabe will agree. Jake will agree. I'll either agree or I'll disagree. If you get booze, then when you get a buzzer, if you get cheers, you get a, one of these sounds. Hold on one second. Special effects guy, please. Perfect. All right, so you get one of those. Hold on one second. Perfect. You guys hear that? Perfect. All right, perfect. perfect. That means that you answered and you said the right topic and we all agree with you. If you do not say the right thing and we all disagree with you, 
then you get a buzzer. Does that make sense, gentlemen? Why don't you go first to show us how it's done? Oh, fair enough, sir. I shall move myself up. And who wants to go second? Game's in order. Godzilla, let's go. I think we'll let the mighty Gabriel Green go second. And there you go. What? That's fine. Perfect. Are you guys ready? <laughs> it could be random one-liners. It could be anything. You know, we're just going to go down final words for the evening. You think it's a game? You think it's a fucking game? Are you guys ready to play? Let's go. Go. So, I was actually watching TV. I was actually watching CNN. And I realized that Joe Biden kind of looks like a sock puppet. Go back better, you guys. No? Joe Biden does not look like a sock puppet. No. No? <laughs> Fair enough. Gabe. Oh, uh, so I just, an opinion. I, uh, I think pineapple deserves to be on a pizza. Agreed. I agree. I agree. I agree. Perfect. Jake, no. I, I think he's half dead, not a stock puppet. He's half dead. I agree. Yeah, touche. I do. Well, well, well. but what Maybe about a little bit more than half halfway? He's he's kind of he's kind of old, you know. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Jay, uh, Gabe. Wait, I I I. Random I, topic, I, Gabe. Gabe, random topic. Okay. Uh, but, but, Never but, comes uh, to mind. Man, it's a tough one, man. Uh, uh, Russia. It's official. You suck. <laughs> yeah, I suck. That's right. Yeah. Go ahead, dude. No, I don't understand the big argument about power slap. I mean, you know, you can get retarded just masturbating, like, you know, whacking your, your thing every once in a while. Like, I you know you can get brain, like, you know, you can get brain damage from anything. But I personally disagree with that notion. Like, I, uh, uh, mm. oh, oh, uh, no. Joke didn't win. Eh. Damn it. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to win May 13th. Hell yeah. I'll get that. yeah. Jake. Fire the entire boxing commission. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Perfect. All right, Gabe, final. It's gone. I missed it. <laughs> that, that was worth the old college try. Uh, that that worked out a lot better in my head than it did. Uh... I got to tell you, David, that one needs a little work. And, and like I I uh, I would have liked to have had a little more like uh, lead time because I probably would add some 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 things. I I genuinely you brought up the idea, but I had no idea what the idea really was. And then you jumped jumped it on me. At least myself, I'm like, oh crap, I don't know what's going on here. But yeah. I it, it, it worked out a lot better in my head. Like usually, five topics works out pretty well. It worked out a lot better in my head than it did uh, on paper. So uh, uh, in person. So I apologize about that. And April Green, thank you. I'm so sorry for being my uh, my test answer for that particular segment. So no, I mean, I I think I understood where you were trying to go with it. I mean, um, you <laughs> fell a little little short, but but it's all right. Learning experiences, you know. We can try again another time. You you good? Fuck yeah, man. And. Final words, final thoughts. Gabriel Green, obviously, you're going to be fighting in May. We're all excited. We're going to be cheering you on. I can't wait to see you back in action. Can't wait to see you competing again, getting this W. What are your final thoughts going into this fight? Uh, just really excited to be in there. You know, uh, like I said, I <clears throat> basically found Jesus. Like, I was always pretty religious, but I, I had a really big spiritual moment that happened um, just recently. And, uh, so I'm, I'm just really looking forward to put it all out there and then, you know, giving all glory to God afterwards and just, you know, having fun and loving life and just being out there. Gotcha. And I know I screwed up that segment, but I didn't screw up this. So just a, just a little teaser of what everyone can expect in May. You get to see him fighting in May. I hope I didn't fuck up that segment just like I fucked up <laughs> the uh, the uh, the last words. But nevertheless, uh, Gabriel Green, an honor to have you on, an honor to talk to you for you to announce.
have some fun with us once again. You know, you're we we love having you on. We love talking to you, and we're rooting for you every step of the way. Uh, Jake, final thoughts and final words from the MMA pioneer. Hey, Gabe, I want you to find the devil for about 15 minutes, my brother. Hey, Jake, Jake Matthews, man, he's an exciting matchup. You're an exciting matchup. I think this is going to be a, a, an amazing fight for you to showcase your skills and, and really put you, you know, even bigger on the map. So, man, I, I'm, I'm in your corner. I'm excited for you, and I'll, I'll be rooting for you, bro. Appreciate it, man. Oh, yeah. And four-time, four-time, four-time world champion owns – one of the best gyms on planet Earth, on this blue marble called Earth. I forget the name of it. I think it's Kaiju something. something. Kaiju MMA, top 5,000 gym in the world. Thank you. Well, you get a free class, too, if you walk in and mention the Fight Mixer, right? Yeah, 100%. I'll give you a free, free week you, you mention the Fight Mixer. Fair yeah. enough. Hey, uh, from the four-time world champ. Okay, bye bye. I've seen you fight a few times on the local circuit here in, in, in California. It's always uh, fun to watch you fight, and uh, uh, you know I, I know Tracy very well. I know a lot of your teammates very well. Uh, I don't think uh, luck comes into play when it comes to fighting, so I'm going to say good skill in, on May, and I, I hope you go do your very best no matter what. Thank you, sir. Uh, oh, yeah. And, and Gabe, I'm going to let you leave it off at the show. Where can we find you on social media, and also where can we find your sponsors? Um, I make it really really easy just put in gifted gabe green on pretty much anything you know instagram only fans I'll, I'll just i'll pop up you know and uh <laughs> no, 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 not, 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 not only fans not only fans. <laughs> not yet much, everything everything's <laughs> only fans you put in uh gifted gabe green and i pop up uh sponsors i got sponsors for days uh you know actually me and uh dover share uh jay walkers uh they're like the best pants you can ever put on so look up jay walkers uh big shout out to my uh family at sp hats trini's been looking out for me from the first day i stepped foot in the in the gym and then um big shout out to smoke and fire if you're uh in socal go go to smoke and fire have the best kind of barbecue you'll ever eat trust me hands down delicious awesome awesome we thank you very much for coming on the show on behalf of myself, Gabriel Green, the four-time world champion, Mr. Gabe, and also Jake Thunderhead, thank you very much. Next week, we will not be here because we are going to be at UFC 285. And, yeah, we'll have another great guest a week before that. Gabriel Green, an honor to have you on, brother. Thank you so much for having fun with us. So down to earth. You are the man. We're going to be rooting for you in the next fight. So, boys and girls, this is the Fight Mixer signing off from myself, David Potter, Gabe, Jake, and Gabriel Green. Have a good night, everybody. Having a hard time going back to the gym after working out at home? Well, now you don't have to with the X-Bar. The X-Bar from X-Bar Fitness is an incredible gym alternative that gives you the same intense workout you get at a full gym with hundreds of machines. One X-Bar alone provides the same workout as a cable machine, bench press, dumbbell set, free weights, leg press, barbell set, and all these other machines. Stop wasting time debating whether or not you should go to the gym. Order the X-Bar to get a quality workout in the comfort of your own home.